What's up, Planeswalkers? It's your boy, K-Dog. Got another fun video for you guys. This one's looking at a uh, Roalesque's Nightmare. It's basically a Sultai Proliferate deck. And so Proliferate is where you uh, <clears throat> are looking to put counters on your creatures. And then you do things and you add counters uh, to them. So you can kind of grow, make your creatures bigger, get more loyalty on your Planeswalkers, and things like that. And uh, so I've kind of been playing around with it and uh, come up with some different... Uh, uh, variations and this is kind of the build that I'm happy with there's definitely a lot of flexibility with this uh, kind of archetype uh, you know you can go in different colors and things like that but uh, you know Sultai is what I've chosen and this is kind of uh, the list I've settled on after uh, some decent uh, play testing and uh, so jumping into it here uh, at the one drop slot we're running four Knight of the Ebon Legion uh, of course probably one of the best one drops in standard it's a one two for one then you put three mana into it, and it gets plus three, plus three, and death touch in the end of turn. And uh, the way it gets counters is at the beginning of your end step, if any player lost four or more life this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion. So once you kind of get this guy going a little bit, you can get counters on it, and then we've got some nice proliferate synergies that can just grow it bigger and bigger, and uh, it becomes uh, very difficult for your opponent to uh, deal with. And so now we're on the two drop slot, and we're in all four growth chamber guardians. Uh, this is just a really powerful uh, two drop <clears throat> for a one in green you get a two two however it has adapt two for three mana and whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on it you search your library for another one and uh, goes to your hand so of course we're in all four so two two for two then uh, the next turn you can just pay three make it a four four and search up another one kind of thin your library uh, draw another uh, creature basically and uh, just kind of keep going from there. So it's just a really uh, nice two drop that saw quite a bit of play in previous seasons. Uh, not so much these days, but I feel, still think it's a pretty solid creature here. And obviously it synergizes nicely. Uh, Pollen Bright Druid is a 1-1 one, one for two. However, when enters the battlefield, we choose one. We can put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or proliferate. And so proliferate is anything that already has a counter. We can put an additional counter on it. And we do need some interaction, so we're running a couple of Tyrants Scorn, so we can uh, choose to destroy target creature with CMC 3 or less. Or uh, anything bigger than that, we can just return a creature to its owner's hand. Uh, it can also be used defensively. If our opponent is uh, very control heavy, we can just bounce a creature back to our hand when they play a sweeper or something like that. And so we don't quite lose all of our uh, board. We can just replay it the following turn. Uh, just run of uh, Murderous Rider. Since we have three colors, uh, the double back can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but it does give us just a little bit of utility removal for creatures or planeswalkers. And then just a nice 2 3 life linking creature. You know, could work well if we have counters on it. Then we can start gaining a bunch of life back later on, since it does take us a little bit of time to get set up. Uh, just the 3 Evolution Sage. That's a 3 2 for 3, and whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. So obviously, uh, on paper, this would synergize really well, and in most cases it does, but we're not kind of all in on a 3-2 for 3, so that's why just a 3 of for me. I'm um, just trying to, trying to vary our strategy to have uh, as many options as possible to kind of get counters on things and other ways of kind of proliferating. Uh, so another way we can do that is the first Iron Games. Uh, this is a card I really like at the 3 drop slot for 2 in the green. It's got uh, 4 Sagas. The first one, you get a 1-1 one, one token. Uh, second Saga, you get 2 put three plus one plus one counters on a creature you control and then the third saga we get to draw a card excuse me two cards if you control a creature with power four or greater and then the fourth saga you get a gold token so it's basically just uh, mana uh, so kind of ramp essentially and also going to run just the one of uh, Kiora uh, there's definitely times when she synergizes really really well with what we're trying to do and other times she's kind of mediocre but you know seven loyalty planeswalker for three mana is a pretty solid deal we can pay one to untap uh, one loyalty to untap target permanent, so we, we can use it uh, to kind of ramp up our lands or to uh, attack in and then untap a creature for back on defense. And whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So we don't have a ton of synergy with uh, creatures power four uh, or greater, so that's why just the one of, but we do have several, so there are definitely going to be drawing some cards off of it, just not like a ton necessarily. And then we're also going to be running a couple of Euro. Just a nice uh, <clears throat> escape uh, creature here. You can play it on uh, turn three, draw a card, gain some life, uh, potentially put another land onto the battlefield. So kind of ramps you up a little bit. Synergizes nicely with obviously Evolution Sage and things like that. 
and then you can escape it later on so it gives you some game uh, in the mid to late game and then moving on to the four drop slot uh, four nightmare shepherds it's a four four flyer for four mana so pretty decent right there whenever another non-token creature you control dies we can exile it and create a copy that's uh, create a token that's a copy of the creature except it's a one one um, so then with something like that then we can uh, Pollen Bright Druid would then get it to re-enter the battlefield trigger. Uh, Growth Chamber Guardian is a 1-1, but you can still adapt it. So it has some nice synergies with the deck, and it's actually worked out really well in some of the testing that I've done with it. Uh, actually, been very pleasantly surprised. Uh, it's, so yeah, it's nice, uh, basically, sweeper protection. And then obviously the 4 power would trigger Kioras. You can draw some cards and things like that. And we also have uh, just the 1 of Vivian. Uh, the triple green can be kind of tricky. And uh, <clears throat> I think she kind of works better mostly in kind of a stompy type build. But uh, obviously, you know, we are trying to put counters on her things. And then she has a little bit of removal here with our minus three. She can uh, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. And then, of course, the plus one where you distribute two plus one plus one counters on up to two creatures. And then those creatures can trample. Um, and the minus five isn't really something that we're worried about. We're more just worried about the... Um, she can be kind of removal at times, and mostly just trying to put counters on her creatures, since that's the whole theme of the deck. And uh, another powerful way to do that is Palukronos. It's a 4 mana for a 0, 0, but enters with 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Then also has Escape, of course, where it comes back with 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And then uh, damage is dealt to it while it has a plus 1 counter. You prevent that damage and remove that many plus 1 plus 1 counters. So it makes it very difficult for your opponent to uh, trade off with it in combat, things like that. And it has the activated ability where it can fight other creatures. So that's pretty uh, <clears throat> it's pretty sweet, and it synergizes really well with our deck. We can just keep adding counters to it. And then uh, Vraska is a nice 4-mana Planeswalker. Uh, just the two of. There's lots of situations where she is really useful, and other situations where she's pretty mediocre. Um, but most, most of the time, uh, she's where you... Uh, Going to get some good value off of her where she can come down and just uh, destroy any non-land permanent with uh, converted mana cost 3 or less. So that includes like Planeswalkers and things like that. And then she can also be a card draw engine uh, later on as you can plus 2 to sack another permanent. And if you do, you gain a life and draw a card. And if she sticks around long enough, you can get her minus 9 where you get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So she's kind of a win condition on herself and we do have some trample and things like that. Uh, definitely... Uh, works really well in this deck. And uh, of course, Roalesque. Uh, it is legendary and it's 5 mana, so just a 2 of, since we are trying to keep the curve somewhat reasonable. Uh, so for 2, green, green, and uh, blue, we get a 4, 5 flying trampler. And when it enters the battlefield, put 2 plus 1 plus encounters on another target creature you control. And when it dies, proliferate and proliferate again. So this works really well with things like um, Nightmare Shepherd and. Uh, Maybe even the right situation where Vraska, you sacrifice, uh, <coughs> use Vraska's plus two to sacrifice your Roalesque to put uh, additional counters on things by proliferating twice, and then you swing into maybe lethal. That's definitely uh, something to consider. And then uh, on the six drop slot at the top end of our curve, just the one uh, Garrick. Uh, it's a six loyalty or a six mana five loyalty planeswalker. Uh, for zero, you get two 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 wolf tokens. And that when those wolves die, you put a loyalty counter on uh, each Garrick you control. Obviously just running the run, running the one. And for minus three, it's destroy target creature and draw a card. So nice uh, removal there and uh, drawing a card. And then like, obviously we're trying to proliferate, so put, putting counters on it. You can pretty easily, easily get to the minus six. And uh, get an emblem where creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and trample. Which of course synergizes with uh, Vraska's ultimate as well. So there's some nice synergies going on with that, but 6 mana is a very top end of our curve, and uh, sometimes it works really well, sometimes it's uh, maybe too little too late, so that's why just the one of. And uh, Voracious Hydra is something I thought was going to be uh, uh, a little bit better fit in this build, but uh, we're so mana hungry and everything else going on, that I think just the two of feels right to me, as uh, X green green trample zero one 1 enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus encounters on it, and when it enters, you can either double the number of counters, or you can fight a target creature you don't control. So obviously you want this to come down, maybe get rid of a smaller creature on the opponent's side that's been kind of annoying you, or it's in the way for uh, you to attack profitably. And then uh, you just keep proliferating it and keep growing it, and the trample damage 
uh, will just keep getting more and more impactful. All right, and that's the uh, creatures, uh, creatures and spells. So let's go over the mana base real quick. Uh, just a couple islands, three swamp, three forest, and then all four water graves, overgrown tomb, breeding pools. And since our mana costs are pretty intense, we're running all four fabled passage, so we want as much fixing as possible for our, you know, double black, triple green, and things like that. So we are just 24 lands, but we do have a little bit of, you know, card draw with Euro and things like that. And so going over the sideboard, uh, a couple of negates, and three agonizing remorse. Kind of gives us some game against the uh, mid-range and control matchups. A couple of Liliana's triumph, because you need kind of ways to deal with uh, Hexproof, uh, Dream Trawlers, uh, Paradise Druids, and things like that. Uh, Mystical Dispute is just uh, one of, so figure since we're in Soul Tide, there's a good chance the algorithm will match us up with other uh, blue base decks, and so this gives us a nice counterspell against what they're trying to do. Uh, three bra Thrashing Brontodons, just a great 3-4 uh, for a 3, works really well against the uh, more aggressive decks, and of course uh, Artifact and Enchantment Removal at Instant Speed works really well against Evercleave and things like that. And we'll need Exile Removal. Uh, we got a couple eat to extinctions where we can exile a creature or a planeswalker and the added bonus of looking at the top card of our library and then we can choose to leave it there or put it into our graveyard so basically surveil and then a couple of shifting ceratops uh, can't be countered five four for four protection from blue pay green give it trample reach or haste so just a nice value uh, creature against certain uh, matchups all right that's pretty much the deck and let's jump into some best of three <clears throat> Rolesque's Nightmare, I mean, Lena Standard, best of three. Hope you guys are hanging in there wherever you're at. I think it's a little crazy these days, but you know, just one day at a time. Alright, here we are up against GGBGEO. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty terrible opening hand. It's even worse. We just have a one drop. I don't know how much more we can go, though. Alright. Do we want Tyrant Scorn or Evolution Sage? I don't know what our opponent is up to. So we can at least uh, turn one knight. Fable Passage into Forest and turn three Evolution Sage. Or well, this could just be over really quick because our draws are terrible. Let's go get our green source, pass the turn. We're not going to attack into this venerable knight. And there's a decent chance they don't block. Board states uh, not great right now, so we need to just be extra cautious. Okay. Now we can attack, and if they want to block, we'll activate. I'd rather kill this now before they can put a counter on it. Uh, before it dies, and they can put a counter on another uh, knight they control, since I'm assuming they're a knight's deck. Orzov or Mardu, perhaps, and they're just. Also uh, struggling with their opening hand. Uh, no blocks. Hmm. Now let's get a counter on it. So this evolution sage will actually do something. And next turn we can evolution sage or Vraska, depending on what our opponent does. Okay, still showing mono white. Banishing light. Huh? There goes that plan. We can always Vraska the banishing light. Then it will just die to the venerable knight. Or we could kill the venerable knight. And worry about the banishing light later. This seems fun. We have a couple creatures to follow up with at least. Just slow down their assault. And Vraska can start plussing and we'll get a creature down next turn to uh, potentially defend. Seems to be uh, struggling here. We're not really in a good spot to sacrifice anything when you all these lands. 
And you know, this is why we're just running the three evolution stages because you know, I mean, a 3 2 on a board like this doesn't really do a whole lot. Vivian, same thing. Triple green, that's like not really doing a whole lot right now. Hmm. Can't do much about this 2 3 flyer. Do we want to call their bluff? I don't think they're going to block. Let's get some value out of it. Let's put a couple of. Uh, Loyalty counters on our Varaska. We kill the Arnvale Tactician. Yeah, I think we just keep their board clear. That's probably the best play action. And if we draw another green source, then we can Vivian and start putting counters on our Evolution Sages. And then when we get land drops, that will really start to get pretty fun. Well, we did find a land. We have a green source, and our Vraska is getting pretty swole here, thanks to these evolution sages. Let's play a vision. Close your eyes. Breathe. Let's destroy the banishing Listen light. To the sounds of the water. on our evolution sages. We'll attack in for four each. We'll get a counter on our Knight of Ebon Legion since we're dealing more you're than four damage. I put it down to five with the uh, empty board. So, hey. It's a little iffy start, but we're getting there. Of course, a long way from over. All right. I'm guessing our opponent is in multi-colors, and they for unfortunately just did not find that second or even third color. Okay. And um, I guess they were a little frustrated by that matchup. Reef. I don't think we need more of those. Let's try one more, guys. Well, that's up against Vanzer. <clears throat> yeah, that was a pretty sweet uh, demonstration of how the evolution sages can just really make things uh, quite pleasant for you. How's that? Uh, keep growing that Vraska and keep uh, using her minus to destroy our opponent's uh, board. Top, huh? All right, well, let's uh, get our knight down. And next turn, we can Growth Chamber Guardian. Esper Enchantments. Okay, so perhaps a Doom Foretold type of deck. This could be uh, unpleasant. Probably Oath of Kaya. Highest Wafer and Birth of Noethys. So our opponent showing us a little bit of spice. And we'll untap land, so we're gonna have to pay. Hmm. Do we want a cure here? Yeah, let's get in for four. I feel like these white decks are always running sweepers, so let's just kind of play it slow. Obviously these walls, having four power is a nice uh, boon to us. Let's attack first. Then I think we'll uh, shock in a land plus Kiora, and then get our second Ghost Chamber Guardian down. turn we could maybe uh, Nightmare Shepherd. Ashiox Erasure. Wow. Okay, that's our only cure, so, you know, not the worst. It cost us the two life from shocking in, trying to do that. But, I mean, that was kind of the perfect thing for them to uh, Ashiox Erasure, since it's just the one of for us. I think that's a pretty cool card, though. It doesn't really see a whole lot of play. But yeah, they're definitely Ash Oxuation, the right card for us. Okay. Definitely think we want to try to get rid of the Starfield Mystic. 
Let's do that first, see if they have another encounter they're holding up, since they seem like they're a little bit tricky. Nope. Okay, they're gonna get their Starfield Mystic back. Dude's a 2-3. Still not enough to deal with our Ghost Chamber Guardian. Can't find out, find another one out. Nightmare Shepherd and Ghost Chamber Guardian if we want. I think we'll just attack with both Ghost Chamber Guardians. We'll adapt the one if they try to block it. Nope. Fine with that, get our fourth one down. Playing it. Just have a Nightmare Shepherd and a Growth Chamber Guardian if they are holding up a Shadow of the Sky here. Oh, you're a best sea guy. Okay. So block one. But then they're taking. Uh... Yep. Yeah. I think we just uh, crash in all three. Make them take eight. Next turn, they're going to tap everything we have, and they'll get to the gain control of something. I think we need to shuffle, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to tap all of our creatures, and they'll get to the gain control of one of them. Definitely have a tough spot here. So they don't have three to activate the Ghost Chamber Guardian. Okay, we can activate. We have mana to play our Pawn Bright Druid. Gain control of one of them. We got the 1 1 jump block. Okay, summon 6, so can't even attack. Perfect Nautilus, so they get a planes, but now they're empty handed. So they can attack for 8, but then they're just dead on the crackback. Get our Nightmare Shepherd first. Anything they block uh, dies. And yeah, they're just dead no matter what. Okay, interesting deck. Alright, so a bunch of enchantments. Pious Wayfarer, Starfield Mystic. I definitely want these Brontodons. Maybe we need more hard removal. Guessing they're gonna bring in some sweepers. Yeah, we'll trim some of our planeswalkers. We're gonna couple the gate, so if they try to shatter to the sky, we can counter it. I don't have any blue creatures except Cure Best the Sea God. Rask is okay. I'd like to make room for these Ceratops. I don't know how worth it that is, though. Blocks the Sea God token, the Cure Best of Sea God 8 8 token. 
that just better than Pelucranos, maybe? Vraska? I don't know. We'll try it. We will try it. <clears throat> yeah, pretty interesting little uh, Esper enchantment build. Not the best hand, but we'll keep it. Got all our colors. We just have the Euro on turn three. Gain a little life and draw another card. We'll save the Fable Passage. Depending on what we need. I think we're pretty well set. Next thing we can Euro and uh, drop the Water Grave untapped. To look at the top card of our library here in a couple turns. Top, top. Hmm. Could get our Knight of the Ebon Legion down. Shocking. Yeah, let's get our Knight down. We have a move for it, but at least we'll give him something to do. Could Vraska and uh, destroy this metamized prophecy just so they don't get the card draw next turn. Let's see what they name. I'm not gonna go out of my way to kill the 04 all said. Okay, that can be kind of annoying. We can't voracious hydra that. Shocking in for four. Okay, so they have Ashiox Erasure here, obviously. And roll up Ashox Erasure, then I'm just going to uh, pass the turn. Not going to play into it. So we'll get to uh, Alsaid and draw a couple cards. That's best nightmare. We're going to kill the uh, knights. Sure. We just uh, Hydra here. Four. And uh, get rid of this so they don't have the option to sacrifice it to save something later. Let's look at our hand and take our Varaska. A little bit annoying, and I get to see our next card. We do have the Ceratops in hand. And the more they fill up our graveyard, the more we'll be able to uh, Euro. Although they will get the Exile next turn. We're still a couple cards away from that. Euro isn't really a central part of our strategy. Three mana open, so it's not Ash out Rich. Your demise won't be quick or quiet. Ah, pathetic. Oh, I've suffered worse. We just want to give ourselves the option to a Euro later. And we can always get rid of this enchantment. Uh, if we draw a Brontodon or Raska can uptick a little bit. Don't need all these lands. Was probably going to die anyway. Oxidator does get around protections in blue and uh, can't be countered. That's a little annoying. But, you know, 
So two of in the sideboard. I mean, they're picking off our least impactful cards with their Ashiox Erasure, so that's fine. All these lands. Yeah, let's stun the deck. And Vraska. Spell. Another Ashiox Erasure, maybe. Okay, they're gonna flash in Omen of the Dead, get their Allstate back. So a four minute open. With the draw, another Swamp down. I don't, know, I don't think they s don't seem like they have sweepers, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll ha save this Voracious Hydra at least. Dreadful apathy. Destroy our uh... we pump our Knight of Evon Legion, so it's not uh, power two or less. Our hero uh, attacking. I also want to deal with this Alsaid. Seen enough. Sweet. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it's a pretty fun little deck. Like I said, there's definitely lots of little variations. Even if you want to stick in the Soul Tide, uh, there's definitely a little, of, little bit of wiggle room, I think. But uh, just in the playtesting I've done, this is kind of the build that I'm pretty uh, comfortable with. Uh, obviously, you know, do whatever suits uh, your uh, your fancy. You know, hope this uh, inspired you to maybe do something similar. Uh, definitely a fun archetype. Uh, proliferate um yeah so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one take care